Hi everyone, we're back. We're going to talk about medical abbreviations part three. In this particular image, you can see that Jenna is a new nurse and she's assigned to Tim who's scheduled for OR, which would be the operating room. He's NPO, which means nothing per orally, and he has an Advan order PO, which would be per, by, per orally by mouth with sips of water. His test will include an EKG, which is an um, electrocardiogram. He has an HAX, which is a history of AFib, which is atrial fibrillation. A CBC has also been ordered, which is a complete blood count. In my other videos, I discuss this in greater detail. And in electrolytes, of course, you know that includes potassium, sodium, um, magnesium. There are several tests that are included. I can't remember them all. Anyhow, he's going to have what kind of surgery? It's called AAA, often referred to as a AAA. And AAA means abdominal aortic aneurysm. If you take the trouble to go to dearnurses.com, there is a case study on a very simple and sweet case study on AAA, abdominal aortic aneurysm. So let's continue. Um, the nursing process referred to as ADPI. What exactly is it? Well, it's broken down into ADPI, of course, is the um, abbreviation for it. And this references A for assessment. And as we can see here, the nurse is doing an assessment. D for diagnosis. The doctor makes a definitive diagnosis. P for planning. The nurse devises a plan which will target improvement. And we know that is referred to as the care plan and she sets the plan up based on the doctor's diagnosis. Then I for implementation. The RN works with other staff members to implement the plan of care. And usually you have one person. Now I cannot clearly say that every institution, some people, LVNs might be assigned this, I don't really know. I'm just talking from my standpoint and as like I said, follow your institution's policies and procedures wherever you work. The RN works with other staff members to implement the plan of care. Then we have evaluation. And that evaluation, what happens, evaluation of patient progress is done using the plan of care. Documentation is also done. So everything is, follows a process. And the process that you follow is the evaluation of that patient, evaluating the progress that has been made using the plan of care, which is based on doctor's diagnosis. And of course, don't forget to document. Documentation is extremely important. If you've forgotten to document, it's almost like you've done nothing and you have nothing to show for it. Then we're gonna talk about the patient who has been, who's had surgery and has got an order for SCD, which is sequential devices. And we know those are the ones, those hoses that are put on the patient's legs, which are inflated and deflated. And some patients, I don't have to tell you, do not particularly like having them on because they feel like they've got these spacey things all around their legs, but they serve a very useful purpose because they prevent something called DVT, which is deep vein thrombosis. And deep vein thrombosis is very dangerous because the end result of deep vein thrombosis can be one of those blood clots breaking off from the calf, traveling to the lungs, resulting in something called PE, pulmonary embolism. And this obviously can result from DVT, which is deep vein thrombosis. You can see here in the picture, this patient is saying, um, I hate wearing, the nurse is asking her what seems to be the problem, and she's saying, I hate wearing these space hoses. Well, it might seem that way, but those space hoses do serve a very useful purpose. And now we're going to discuss CHF. What exactly is CHF? It's congestive heart failure. Here we have a patient displaying the signs of congestive heart failure. He's displaying what is called SOB, shortness of breath. Shortness of breath will occur when a patient is in congestive heart failure. They have great difficulty breathing. Their lungs are all filled up with fluid, and they sometimes, sometimes get that pink, frothy sputum. In fact, it almost, I, there is an interesting case study on CHF also on dearnurses.com, which you might enjoy rummaging through just to help you. And the, he's telling the nurse, nurse, I, can, I cannot breathe. He's having great difficulty breathing. Well, 
normally what happens, such patients, um, nurse does an assessment, and as the nurse does an assessment, you can hear that the lung sounds, almost sounds like a horse galloping. And I'll read this whole thing for you here. Hey, nurse, help me, I cannot get my breath. And the patient, the nurse is saying, well, what seems to be the problem? Obviously, this patient is in congestive heart failure, which I've already described as CHF. Mr. N is complaining of SOB, shortness of breath. He is in CHF, which is congestive heart failure. O2 via NC, which is oxygen via nasal cannula, was given. His O2 sats, which is oxygen saturation, and vital signs will be monitored. EKG, which is the electrocardiogram, INO, intake and output, and CXR, chest X-ray, will also be done. Well, I hope I've helped you with abbreviations. There's probably more to come. Have a great day.